So, you want to be a Formula One driver? <laughs> okay, that's simple enough. As anyone who has been in the motor racing paddock can attest to, getting to Formula One is as simple as saying ABC. If you had no mouth, or vocal cords, or any ability to communicate in any capacity. It sounds pretty cynical to say something like that, but there is a reason for it. It's because not all is as it seems in this game. I know I sound like a negative Nancy here, and that's because I'm a glass half empty kind of guy. But to elaborate on the issue, I'm gonna run through the process it would take to get your sorry ass to Formula One. Tell you what, my boy, you tell me exactly what you want, and I will very carefully explain to you why it cannot be. Anyway, sit back, grab some popcorn, and let me run you through the process of getting to Formula One star. Adam. Right, so let's start off on the grassroots of motorsport. Most racing drivers will begin their careers in carts. You don't necessarily have to, but you will be doing yourself a favour by hauling one of these things around in your youth. This is where you develop as a racing driver in every aspect. Drivers of all ages compete in this category. Oh yeah, that reminds me. It would be a good idea to start the sport out at a young age. I'm thinking six, seven, eight years old. Starting it out in your early teens would be pushing it. But if you're a 47 year old man living in your basement blowing your garden hose, I hate to be the baron of bad news here. But the odds are that your Formula 1 dream is probably over. Comprende? In any case, karting is quite a cheap sport to start out in. That is until you start buying stuff. Purchasing your own cart, trolley, equipment, sets of tyres, trailer, if you need one, will start costing you five figures, depending upon the condition of the cart and the state of your country's economy. You start off club racing, then you get to the nationals, where you find out that some of the top drivers and top teams are spending ludicrous amounts of money for a four day weekend. We're talking new sets of tyres, and in some cases new chassis in every single session. And don't forget politics, because I mean, <laughs> Hey, even that shit in karting. Then of course, there is the international karting scene. This is the place where some parents would fork out 130,000 pounds for one season of racing for their kid. Is it stupid? You bet it is. Problem is, that's the reality of motorsport. And reality is kind of kicking ass at the moment. So that's what you're up against. But let's theorize that you succeed in the karting scene despite all of that. Fantastic. I guess now you'll be looking to progress into racing cars. Well, you need to be a certain age for that. Generally, 15 to 16 years old is the earliest. Now, if you're on the path to Formula One, my advice to you would be to compete in either the ADAC or Italian F4 championships. Generally, those serious about making it to the big time compete in both series in a calendar year. Formula 4 is the first step for new racing car drivers looking to embark on a serious racing career and was initially conceived so that yearly costs do not exceed 100,000 euros. But this being motorsport, we're not quite at the stage yet where those intentions have been met. Generally, the drivers, sorry, the driver's parents spend around 300,000 euros per year for such championships, some more so. And that's before we get into the miscellaneous stuff, such as travel, accommodation, and so forth and so on. I mean, some teams do include that stuff, but it varies from team to team. And hey, if you live on the other side of the world like I do, you need a crib over in Europe. Whether you'd be living in an RV or a Monaco apartment, you're gonna have to start shelling out for that stuff. But say you accomplish this, where am I? And you set yourself up to race in the Formula 4 championships that I mentioned before. Try and set yourself up with a team like Van Amersfoort or Prima Power Team. Why you may ask? Because they're the best. It's that simple really. The Formula 4 cars aren't the greatest of things to hit the motor racing scene either, known to be temperamental when it comes to handling. So odds are, you may have issues with it during the year that will affect your performances. But this being a video based on hypotheticals, let's say you wind up victor at season's end. The next logical step for you would be to progress into Formula 3. But it's not totally straightforward, as there are several different F3 series across the globe. There's the regional series, the Alpine Euro Cup, but ultimately, if you're serious about making it to Formula 1, you're gonna need to jump into the deep end here and plant yourself into the FIA Formula 3 Championship. And if you're not in a Prima car when you sign yourself up for this gig, odds are you're going to drown in the mid-pack. We've seen that with drivers this year such as Dennis Halger and Igor Fraga. The cost for this series? You're looking at about half a million euros, easy. But by this stage, you're on the support bill for Formula 1, which means that prying eyes will be lurking. Not too fortunate on the wealth side? Well, theoretically, you can get yourself into a driver academy such as the ones at Renault, Ferrari and Red Bull, and they should sort your money woes out, right? <laughs> Yeah, sure, if you believe that. Very rarely does an academy solely fund a driver. The majority of those academy drivers bring in at least some amount of money to their respective teams. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but have you ever heard of the saying there is no such thing as a free lunch? Well, the same thing applies in motor racing because motorsport sucks. But let's say you're one of those one in a billion talents, like a Charles Leclerc, or a Max Verstappen, or a Theo Porcher, or a 
to someone else. Let's say you can get an academy to fund your career entirely. Well, that's fantastic. You're now sussed on the money front. You just got to trust that they're going to put you in the right series. And some of these cats aren't very good at doing that. Getting back to F3, now that you've got a blank check, which let's be real is extremely unlikely, but let's theorize you do. A winter series would serve you well. Develop your skills during the off season, get some super license points of which you need 40 to compete in Formula One. So if you include Asian F3 and the Toyota Racing Series, and those series will cost you around about 100,000 euros as a rough guideline, and those championships only last for a few weeks at a time. Add that onto the already existing half a million that we discussed earlier, and all of a sudden you've accumulated enough money to kickstart a well-funded indie film. But whatever, you compete in the Formula 3 series. You win the title somehow all is well now you have to move up to the fia formula 2 series as anyone who wins the formula 3 series is not allowed back in but i mean how hey, you don't want to compete in another season of f3 right we're off to formula 1 right so now you're in formula 2 the step below formula 1 and the price for competing in the series mm, 1 to 3 million euros depending upon what team you're with i mean sure you can get a free ride like some drivers have in the past but unless your teammate is a rich canadian or son of an oligarch or some someone in deep with a Russian mafia, odds are you're going to have to fork out some dough for this venture. And besides, if those types of drivers are your teammates, you're likely going to have to be helping them out as part of your free ride deal. And depending upon certain things, you may be required to let off the throttle every once in a while if you catch my drift. What's more, no matter how good your team is, rookies typically don't fare that well in the series. So odds are you're going to be spending two years in the series. That will start pushing the budget in excess of 6 million euros. Seriously, f the sport. However, you beat all the odds, and you miraculously win the Formula 2 title. And like the F3 series, you can't compete there again, which means the only place for you to go now is Formula 1. So how do we get on the Formula 1 grid? Well, if you want to self-fund your campaign, the last driver to do so is now paying 30 million euros a year for a seat. 30 million euros, that is double the budget of Jojo Rabbit! But hey, you're part of the academy, right? They should shepherd you into the top flight of motorsport, right? Whoa, hold your horses, girlfriend. Which one are you you with. Renault, for instance, is notorious for keeping their drivers in a holding pattern and never really promoting them to Formula 1. So if you're part of that academy, you're sh** out of luck. Ferrari do bring up their drivers into teams such as Alfa Romeo, but given how stacked their academy generally is, you're going to have a lot of convincing to do to get yourself into Formula 1, ahead of someone whose last name may be Schumacher, Alesi, or Fittipaldi. Or maybe you're part of that Red Bull academy. Now these guys do give their drivers a shot, although they seem picky with who they choose. But if you are part of the academy, and you do get to third base with Helmut Marko, then congratulations, you're finally into Formula 1. But then that's the problem. You're in Formula 1, a place run amok with politics, rich folk, I'm extremely angry. and the oh-so-dangerous creatures that plague the known world. The French. And you're also part of that Red Bull Academy, which means that you're more than likely going to be thrown into Alpha Tauri. And drivers who are drafted into that team rarely last more than two to three years in Formula 1 at all. Some even less. And most will not be promoted to the main Red Bull seat, either down to lack of opportunity or perceived lack of ability. So unless you can make a big splash at Alpha Tauri, Red Bull may not promote you and other teams won't take an interest in you. But at the end of the day, you are a Formula 1 driver. And all it took was tens of millions of euros in funding, a potential move to the other side of the globe. Implementing yourself into an environment where the rich rule the coup, where your last name most definitely means more than your performances, where success doesn't guarantee rewards, where ego trumps logic, where stupid rulings can change based on which way a fart blows in the wind on any given day, and above all else, achieving a racing record more successful than any other racing driver in history. So to everyone watching this video, my question to you is, what's your excuse? <laughs> But yeah, nah, I hope it didn't spoil your days too badly. Hopefully motor racing can become more accessible to those without wealth in the future. Maybe areas such as sim racing can help shed light on some of the best talent out there, regardless of their backing. Or maybe... The sport is doomed? Yeah, probably that. But anyway, people, thank you very much for watching. Drop a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you're awesome, and always remember, keep it respectful, be wholesome, don't be a manus, and as always, I'll see you all later. Let me tell you, wanna see you fly, see you fly. way up in the sides, cause the day I die, we're heading for the silver line. Let me tell you, wanna see you move, wanna see you move.